things, and I really like for the boys, boys. to be here because they can't hear when they're doing those things. And uh, because these are the things they have to know what if they hear them, they'll remember them. But as long as they got those videos, they won't. It starts taking over their lives. They can't do anything. So anyway, um, I prefer that they do that. But anyway, Here we'll get to the chair. See, Guna is what we say to boys. Guna is a dear boy. Say to me, Sit down, dear boy. I'm going to show you something. Get your mind clear so you can hear it. Uh, something that we don't talk about much anymore is that. When we when we live when we live together, say all of us are living in one room. There's always the cross possibility of brushing against somebody or causing somebody some discomfort. So there had to be rules in how you do that. And we call it Satyuga uh, that means you're drawing a straight line to the highest values of the of the population. And one of those highest values one of those highest values we call Gurunai Kana. That's having a soft mind. In a prayer that we do, we ask for the strength to be strong enough to have that soft mind. Having a soft mind means that you live your life being concerned with your effect on other people and also how they feel about things rather than just your own. Uh, achieve. Now, if Lakdas is the big boss who can't give orders, so this person can't order anybody to do anything. But people follow him because he's got that soft mind. He understands everybody's weaknesses, everybody's strengths. And so that's what we have to do is to learn how to do that. Instead of saying, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. And so having that soft mind to me, you bring all your gifts to the table. You don't hide things, you bring your gifts to the table ready to share them. Then, so when you live that life, it's a very delicate dance in which you avoid causing. We don't use the word, word respect because people don't even know what that is. We can come up with a lot of thoughts about it, but having a soft mind, the highest compliment you can ever give a person is say that person has. That, that's a kind person. 
But anyway, that's that's one of the values. But what I'm going to mention too is with the, with the drum. We call it Gujao. Gujao really means a beggar's flag. <laughs> but uh, but Gujao, what we were told to his boys that we had to learn the drum to a tough guy and a strong man. And he says this Gujao, and here's what he did. GW gong, that NGW, or so we, our NG is pronounced mm, not ang. Mm. Gidong, gidong, gidong is really a whip because that's the motion is of when you're getting that drum. You're whipping it rather than beating it. So, Kujawai, when you put A A Y at the end, it means that one. It's a specific one. Kujawai is just drum. It's just a drum. But when you put A A Y on the end, it's a specific one. So Kujawai holds it down. He's whipping his drum, <laughs> beating his drum. Uh, and this is the most musical. How is it? Uh, but people have a lot of uh, made up a lot of rules about drumming because residential schools beat a lot of stuff in people's heads about what's good and what's bad, what's evil, and all those things. But when it said that, you know, some people say a woman's not supposed to touch a man's drum. There were times when that was true. See. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> words are so powerful that Nabi Taktas, this man of, of depth and substance, a woman of great great kind of presence, their power was so strong that this man would take certain woods and put them in that bent wood box, put the lid on and tie it shut. And those words were only taken out when it was appropriate for their use. In Fel juice, that woman of great calm and presence put a wooden plug in her lip. And it made it painful for her to speak. So she would consider every word she was going to use before she uttered the first one. So when we start looking at our words as to what they mean, it's very important to listen to how they're pronounced because we get the wrong pronunciation, like uh, Fawa. Fawa is, uh, is a person of high esteem. Fawa is defecation. That's when you go to the toilet. My dad's brother's wife was like, she was my mother's cousin, they were charities. And there was an old lady who used to come visit her every day. In Haida, her name was Sanja. Sanja is a uh, orca, whale killer. In English, they call it killer whale. We call it whale killer because they would kill whales. And she was too thin killer whale, put it that way. Sanja still for stone. And her name was Sanja. And one day Aunt Peggy decided to try to pronounce her name. So when she came to the door, she opened the door. Oh, how are you doing, Sanja? 
And that old lady just sat on the porch laughing. She just couldn't even stand up because in call, instead of calling her killer whale woman, she called her toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important that you learn the words correctly. Yeah, but, but some some words, you know, you can have fun with. Uh, see, with, with boys, the old ladies were always teasing us boys, but they always gave us little gifts, and we didn't do anything for them. See, when when we're that age, you got your boy's age, we listen to those old ones, and they give us presents, they sing to us, they would give us compliments, they tell us what nice boys we were. They didn't yell at us, because if you yell at us, we get scared. And then we couldn't hear. If they hit us, we get scared, and we can't hear. So they were sneaky, they would treat us nice. So anyway, with the drum, uh, once you finish it, then you have to dance it, sing it into life. Because you're taking two things that used to be alive and transforming them into something else. And, part, and then when you put that on it, you put your paint on it, you're putting some of your own essence in it, you're putting your story into it, and then you dance it into life. And it isn't something just to turn around, it's just, this is a part of your family. And some people say you got to give away the first thing that you make. Uh -huh. That's a rule that somebody made up in residential school. What it is, is you get to keep only that which you give away. What that means, if you give that drum away for the rest of your life, that drum will never get broken, it will never get old, it'll never wear out, it'll always look that way for the rest of your life. And so that's the way you get to keep it. You keep it in your memory. So that's why people would give that one away, because they wanted that one to remain their first one. So people make up a lot of rules about a lot of things. Now, I don't know anything about making drums. I mean, I did it, but uh, when I was a kid, we didn't have any drums in the village. My grandmother had a cheese box, a real thick cardboard, and had it just put a drum skin on it. And uh, that's what they used to use for them because the church, the church wasn't really a big thing in our lives like it was here in Canada, but um, there's still some things they didn't do, just trying to respect those other people's wishes. So that my grandmother gave that down to me, but I gave it to my cousin, who was uh, my dad's nephew, and he inherited the chiefship from my dad. Was uh, chief of the Dunder House, so I gave him my number. So, anyway, that's what I have to say. Uh, here's something you can remember. I think what goes with it. Just touch and say Kun. 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 That's that thing that sticks out in front of you. The uh, end of a loaf of bread, the heel is called Sibli Kun. <laughs> so, whale is called Kun because its nose comes into life first. And the point of land is called Kun. And then your ears, Gyu. Gyu. So, Kun, Gyu. Gyu. And if you're if you're hard of hearing or you don't listen, they call you cute now. His ears don't work. <laughs> <laughs> so there's yeah, he's got he's, he carries his ear in his pocket. <clears throat> hearing aids. In that movie White Bank too, my dad's character was called uh, one ear. No, that was Reno Brown, one ear. But my dad was the one that was deaf in one ear, and they called him Bad Dog. And I asked Reno Rudd, so how come they call him Bad Dog? He said, well, in every litter of pups, there's always one that's no damn good. He said, if all the kids in trouble and everything, that's your dad. So, so, Kun is your nose, Huts, 
Cuts is your hair. Cuts, cut, you. Let's hear it. Cuts, 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 cuts. One, one, you. Now, if you use the word kill, that's a different. That's a clam. But it's also a road, a trail, a ladder. So I asked my uncle, how come they all have the same name? He said, because that's not what they are. I know I'm dumb, but I'm slow. <laughs> so he said, Q, that trail or road will always take you to a certain point. Q, that ladder will take you to a certain point. Oh, and Q is a doorway that will always take you to a certain point. Then he <coughs> stopped talking. And I waited for him and said, the clam? And he looked at me like I was defective. <laughs> He said, when that clam squirts water, it will always lead you to a certain point. So it isn't any of those things, it's that concept. So a horse is just called big, long ears. Uh, so, and then most is what they with your teeth are clean. That's the beaver, too, it's because of your front teeth. But anyway, I'm taking up this time. and. Uh, so I'm done now. Be on to Zoom. When you want people to know something very serious, you say in a, in a lighthearted manner, my spirit says so too. Be on to Zoom. Oh, uh, ah. Mm. You're going to be drunk too, buddy. No, oh, I can't say. Really? Why you stop it? My wife said it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never stop it. No. Today's a honeydew day. Honeydew this, honeydew that. Well, I'm going to introduce uh, Sabian, Sabian Bracelet. They'll be uh, showing us how to make drums. Uh, and uh, I'll let Tim uh, take over. Okay. Okay. Go back over there. I don't want to hear you again. Tonight. Yeah, that's my name. Michael. Um, I know a lot of Gonkwin this side. Hello. Why people come from the Ottawa River where the flooding has been going on this week. Um, that's my red. My drum time style is mostly um, what I learned out here when I lived in the Sahelis community. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to back home. Uh, we actually make drums that are called pom toms, and they're uh, bridge bars. We hollow out a bridge bar block, fill it with water, put a hide on top, and so we can remove the <coughs> water and change the sound constantly by the amount of water that we put in. But I really adopted this scale of style. I really like these drums. So that's what I'm going to teach you today. This is an example of one that I made last night. That's what the back is going to look like when you're done. It's going to sound like this. And that's pretty much all there is to tell you. The first process is to take your, your frame. If you look at your frame, it has a beveled edge and it has a rounded edge. The beveled edge goes down on the high. Kind of center it for, for your flat foot so that your frame is centered by itself. Guys, hush. No. I'm not here to hear y'all. Oh, thank you, bro. <laughs> 
have your frame centered on your head. Take your roll of sinew, pull out a piece of it, this one, and then form a circle. Put that circle inside the frame. You want to leave about this much of a gap around. It's just estimate there's no exact exact size that has to be. So you have the two pieces like that. Which on this drum is this here, and then the rest just ties into that centerpiece. So when you have your circle by one, two, three times around. Then you have the two pieces, so one, two, three times around that piece. Hold all four pieces and pull so that it doesn't slip. Tie a second knot. And a third. And then pull your circle to make sure that it doesn't slip.